Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we unbox a prototype of Gibson's most hated guitar pretty much ever and then it became the sleeping underdog that everybody felt bad for. That's right, I found Henry Juskowitz's prototype of the legendary, infamous Firebird X. Now the story behind how I found this is quite fascinating because lo and behold, it was actually at a guitar center. But we used to see those Firebird X's so much that I told you guys that just must be where Firebird X guitars go to die. <laughs> you know, instead of underneath an excavator. However, peculiarly enough, I did a search today and I don't see any more Firebird X's in their inventory. So they either sold them or did something else to them. But a fan of the show just happened to be looking on Guitar Center at these things and he noticed, huh, one of these serial numbers looks a little bit strange. Because I just figured most of the Firebird X's on their website, you know, they're just Firebird X's. If you want one, you can get one. But this particular one, if you happen to click on it, and look at the back of the headstock. There's a little bit something special on the back of it. Now, first off, uh, our handle is quite worn. This case is all beat up. This is like the worst condition Firebird X case I have ever seen. However, that's actually good for our story here because this thing has traveled to many of Gibson shows where they showed off the original prototype of the Firebird X. Man, this thing is in garbage condition. <laughs> Not bad, bad, but it definitely needs a good cleaning. That's all I've got to say. The amount of people that have played this thing is sickening. And you can definitely tell you almost want to just leave it alone. That way its story can continue to go on. But what does the back side of the headstock say? FBX Proto 1. Now, does that mean this is absolutely the first Firebird X prototype? I'm not sure because sometimes it could just be like it's the first one of the Redolution finish. It might not be the absolute first, but there's also good reason to suspect that it could indeed be the first as the serial number indicates. So this was just, you know, a fantastic collectible find. And if you're wondering why I'm pairing it in with an unboxing episode, it's because I don't want to review another one of these. I've done it not once, but twice on each and every single color through the Trade Tuesday series, as well as it was a special Halloween episode one year. So if you want to learn how these things sound and a little bit more about the history, I've got tons of videos on these things already. But I wanted to show you guys this beautiful, beautiful piece of Gibson history here. Oh man, I don't think the strings have ever been changed. So I called up the Guitar Center to order this, right? And I asked them, where, where did you guys get this? Because there was also a blue one that had a strange serial number. It didn't say prototype on it or anything like that. But it had some other weird serial number. But unfortunately, that one has sold as well. I decided to just pick this one up because it said it was a prototype. But basically, the story is these were traded in by a Gibson rep for a different guitar. So I think that story pretty well lines up here as you know this is the one that you saw at the NAMM shows and wherever else they would take it the ones that you know people would play on stage I know they had a number multitude of artists play these things now I have no way to guarantee that this is the exact one that they play because I think they had multiple ones on there but you know saying proto number one at the back of the headstock instant collectible and it's got the wear on the case to prove that it's been taken to show to show as far as uh, case candy here, looks like we got some batteries and chargers. And unfortunately, this one did not have any of the pedals or anything. But that freaky blue one that I was talking about did. So I kind of called him up and I was like, hey, can I buy the pedals from that one for this one? And they're giving me a hard time about it, but yes. They eventually gave in to my demands and I also got the pedals so it can be a complete set. So what an incredible find this was. In fact, I don't even care if any of this stuff works because as long as you have it, that's good enough because in, you know, 40, 60 years, I doubt these things are going to work anyways. <laughs> There's so much complicated stuff in them, but it is good that I was able to get a matching set. And hey, this one even has the wear and tear to match. 
And since they were kind of, you know, early prototypes all in all, it's possible that this was the original one and they just paired it with that blue one anyways. But yeah, hey, I even have this thing this time. Both of those. Yeah, this is complete. What a cool find. Oh, we even got this thing. Yeah, this is, I would say, 100% complete. So the big question is, do I sell it? Do I keep it? What do I do? You know, if the offer's big enough, I'll sell it. But otherwise, you know, that, that's kind of a cool guitar to own, right? You know, the, the most hated Gibson ever. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. I like the weird, goofy ones. But let's go ahead and uh, switch gears here. This is a international forwarding service. Somebody who lives in Canada, they couldn't buy from Guitar Center slash Musician's Friend directly. So they asked me, hey, uh, can you help me out? Yes, I do offer an international forwarding service. I also bring guitars back for certain people. They're slightly different programs. You just have to reach out and talk to me. The very situation to situation. But I think this is the uh, the fourth guitar I've helped this particular buyer with. You might remember the last time when we did, uh, I think it was two Epiphones for him. They were the red Epiphones, kind of Jared James Nichols style with the dual P90 pickups. I think we got those from uh, AMS. They were an exclusive, something like that. But this is a Schecter signature guitar. So I will be forwarding this on to him, but hey, let's go ahead and check it out for a little bit because it's kind of an interesting guitar. Whoa, that is not quite as bright of an orange as I thought it was going to be. So this is like a super high-end Schecter custom shop type thing. And it appears to have a really nice neck. Like you can feel the wood grain in certain areas. You can even see it. Oh, and they've aged it too. I didn't realize it had finish checking. This is brand new. And they've got a little bit of a sculpt right here to kind of make it easier. These things are pretty expensive. Not the cheapest guitar on the block. But from first impressions, it feels all right. The inlays are pretty cool. They basically just have like a golden circle ring and then that matches in with the rest of the fretboard. That's pretty cool. And then you get the wheel truss rod adjustment. I mean, this feels like, uh, despite being brand new, It has a nice worn in feel to it. And it even has locking tuners. I like the mint green pick guard matching with that orange finish. Oh, and uh, I guess looking at this, it's actually a Wenge. Okay, I guess that makes sense. It looks rosewood-esque, but like, look at all that. That's pretty cool. Especially since that's the side you see when you play. And they're saying Macassar Ebony. That matches really well. I thought for sure that was straight up rosewood. And we've just got a straight up alder body on this one. It should be in Canada by the end of next week. But uh, a little bit of an extra story on this one. I've unboxed this, I think, on like four different unboxing episodes. But I have to say it, I was wrong. And I'm sorry, I completely misunderstood this guitar. I thought for sure the original ones were going to be more valuable. But now that I know the rest of the story about these things, yeah, it's pretty clear that the 2020, 2021 releases will probably be more collectible. And what guitar are we talking about this time? Well, we're talking about the signature Captain Kirk Douglas. One last time, I promise, I will never unbox this guitar again on the show for another year. Even if I buy another one, I won't unbox it on the show. So previously, I told you guys that these were like the best thing that Gibson USA was making for 2,500 bucks, but it's a lot of bang for your buck. You get so many different tones out of these things because let's count it. You get one, two, three pickups on this thing. You get all the different coil splitting options. You get the master volume. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, but these are out of production. I thought for sure that this was like, hey, we're going to make as many as we can literally sell within the first year because I never read anything about it being a limited production run. I knew it was limited edition within an extent and it just seemed like, you know, they were behind on these things. So you were piling up pre-orders and whatnot. But no, I, I talked to someone at Gibson. They're like, no, those are done. Completely sold out. So if you find a shop that happens to have one, I highly suggest picking it up. Now it all makes sense why these things are starting to sell for much more than just brand new. <laughs> it's because they're out of production. It's like, ah oh, man, 
These were great. And I really think people will fall in love with these things and love them for years to come. So that's why I wanted to pick up another green one to share that tail. Unfortunately, this one has some uh, finish checking going on. It's not the super ugly kind, but it is there. But all in all, that, that's kind of sad, but at the same time, I understand. <laughs> These were just too good of a value to leave them, you know, on the market. So if you were looking for one of these, unfortunately, outside of just happening to find a dealer that gets one in yet, they're done making them. So as always, you can check this one out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. You can also buy it on Reverb if you want to pay a bit more. But to end out today's episode, let's go ahead and pack some stuff up. We've got quite a few guitars to box up and say goodbye to today, but this one is extremely special. So this is the one that we had kind of restored last episode. It was a consignment piece. It took about 24 hours to sell, but I cannot be happier to who this is going to. No, it's not some famous celebrity musician, but it's somebody who's always wanted a silver burst, but they were on a quest for the mythical birth year, birth day guitar. And this just happened to 100% line up with what he was looking for. The 210th day of 1980. That is a difficult quest to succeed in, finding your birth year, birth day guitar. And I wish everybody luck who's searching for it. Next up, we got the Haruna Tally. Even if they just would have had the neck painted white like the Silent Sirens, I think it would have looked even better. But at the same time, I can understand how the bare maple looks good against the white. But there was a commenter saying that all these Japanese artists have really good vision for signature guitars. But you also have to remember, they're probably slightly limited with what they can do to keep the guitar within a budget. So who knows, maybe the artist actually wanted all that fancy stuff along here as well. But anyways, this one is going to a person who says this fits in perfectly with their band, so this thing's gonna get gigged. Continuing on here, we have something from Gibson USA that we reviewed not too long ago. Well, we didn't review this one, but I featured it alongside the other Semi Hollow Les Paul, the ES Les Paul Special. This is just the Les Paul Semi Hollow. So I threw this one up on my website. Just in case you're not aware, I do sell all my stuff directly on my website. Slightly cheaper prices and free shipping, and you don't get hit with sales tax unless you're in Ohio. Until they inevitably change the sales tax laws again, but who knows. But this was just a fantastic example. I love the wood grain on the back, and I really do enjoy these guitars. Next up here, we have the Haruhata Stratocaster. So I challenged you guys to get 2,000 likes within 48 hours on that video, and I would do the review and demo of this model. You guys exceeded that, so that's fantastic. However, this sold in the meantime, so what I did is I ordered a red and a blue one. So I'm gonna get this one sent off, that way this guy's not waiting forever for me to make the video. And we'll just do a double feature where I show you the differences between the two different models of the Haruhata Stratocaster. And I'll teach you a little bit more about the guy and his signature guitars from over in Japan. So look forward to that video in, uh, let, let's say a month and a half. I'll probably get them in about three weeks, but g give me some time. There's going to be a whole bunch of reviews coming up. And the last one for us to pack up today comes in this nice little TKL case. Basically exactly what Gibson makes, except for the exterior is a little bit different. It's not Gibson branded, but they're made by TKL up in Canada. So this was my silver burst. The one we did, I think, two unboxing episodes ago. This one sold uh, roughly, I think, like 10 or 12 hours after that other one sold on Reverb. And it's actually going to the guy who purchased the other one that I restored on the unboxing series that had that big Kaler route on it. The guitar wasn't too bad once it got all cleaned up. Same thing with this one. It's got some nicks and dings, but now this guy kind of has a cool collection. Because I'm not sure what he did with that other one. Maybe he just put a Kaler in it again. That way you're eating up the route. And it has a silver burst that could potentially be whammied out. And one that's a little bit more stock in configuration. But I got him a pretty good deal on this one. Because it's like, yeah, sending two silver bursts out on the same day. Yeah, that works for me. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning into this boxing unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed checking out that Firebird X prototype. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. 
take care.